Hey friends, welcome back to the channel. So after creating coloring books using Midjourney, Leonardo AI, and several stable diffusion models, I decided to give Dolly 3 within ChatGPT4 a shot. And wow, really nice results. And make sure you watch till the end because I'll be demonstrating some useful editing techniques to help you isolate elements, remove grayscale, color, and more. So let's get started. The first thing we'll do is head to Amazon to do some quick keyword research. I'll start by typing in something simple like coloring books and then start walking through the alphabet one letter at a time like this, paying attention to the suggestions and choosing one that piques my interest. For instance, I'll select Coloring Books Dinosaurs, and with the help of this free Chrome extension from self-publishing titans called Titans Quick View, I can quickly determine whether this niche is worth targeting. If you get a keyword score above 50, then you know these are good keywords. This gave me an overall keyword score of 64, which is excellent. So now that we know what kind of book we want to create, let's go over some of the most important elements you'll want to include. If you take a look at some of the best-selling coloring books on Amazon, you're going to find a whole lot more going on than just a simple title page and some images. These extra elements are important if you want to create the highest quality coloring book that will stand out from the competition. Alright, let's head to ChatGPT. Here you can start with a prompt like this. I'm creating a dinosaur-themed coloring book for kids. Can you give me some suggestions for what to include in the front matter of the book? This is going to give you a list of the most important elements to consider incorporating. And if you want more specific examples for these points, just prompt to expand on them. And there you go. These examples are an excellent starting point, so hopefully this demonstrates how helpful this is in brainstorming new ideas and ways to produce the highest quality content for our books. So now to truly set your book apart from the competition, let's add some educational value. I like the idea of quiz style question and answers. So I developed this prompt to speed up the process from here. I've also written out all the prompts used in this video in the description if you'd like to use them for yourself. This prompt will produce 10 dinosaur names with their pronunciations, a question and answers portion, as well as an illustration prompt. And I want 30 dinosaurs in my coloring book, so I'll repeat this process two more times. Slightly adjusting the original prompt, this time asking for 10 new unique dinosaurs. Then after you have all 30 dinos, you can start generating your images. So I'll start with T-Rex, just copy and paste the prompt right back here in GPT. Or if you're not a paid subscriber, you can use Bing's Image Creator for free. And to be completely transparent, I actually prefer using Dolly 3 within Bing as it's faster and you get 4 results at once. Then repeat this process for all 30 of your images and don't be afraid to re-roll these prompts. Also, if you find yourself struggling to get the images you want instead of just regenerating, sometimes it's worth altering the prompt and starting with a fresh generation. Also note you are limited to 40 generations every 3 hours. Alright, so now you have 30 images downloaded to your computer, but these images are low resolution, low quality at this point, so we'll need to vectorize them later. But for now, let's walk through bulk creating the main coloring pages for your book. Start again by prompting ChatGPT, can you give me all 30 dinosaur names, pronunciations, question and answers in a table format with a column for each. Then manually copy this table from the end of the answer section to the beginning of the name section like this. And now we're ready to head to Canva to build the interior of our book. We'll start by creating a new design at 8.625 inches by 11.25 inches. Then the first thing I do is set margins all the way around the page at 0.375 of an inch or as close as you can get. Once you have your margins set, you can go to File, then View Settings, then lock them in place. And if you don't see your guides in the first place, you can turn them on and off from here as well. And then to create a border, I just use a square shape stretched out to fit just inside my margins. And then by going to Color and changing this to Transparent, then going to Border and giving this a solid line set to a thickness of 5. Now we can add our text boxes. I'll start with the heading, dragging this up and to the left side, almost touching your border. Then drag it to the right side an equal distance to almost touch the right border. This will ensure your text fills the page. Then I'm going to change this font to Londrina Shadow and reduce the size down to 40. And for the pronunciation text, I'll add a little bit of body text, which has a font size of 22. And I want Alice for this box. And for the answer box, I'll duplicate this, pull it down and stretch it from the left to right again, and change this font this time to Genty Sans. I'll also make this one a little bit bigger at 25, then duplicate and drag it down to the bottom for the answer box. Finally, you'll go to the Apps tab and scroll down to Bulk Create, then select Enter Data Manually. Once you're here, just clear this table format and paste in your 30 dinos table from ChatGPT. Now all we need to do is connect this data by right-clicking on your text box, then clicking Connect Data and selecting the correct option. Then repeat this process, connecting the data to your pronunciation and your question and answer section. Finally, you're ready to click continue and generate all 30 designs. 
Now you can start popping your images generated in Dolly on your pages here and working on them with Canva's AI tools. For instance, let's say you have an image like this where you don't like something in it like this wonky, plain, pterodactyl bird looking thing here. You can completely erase this or anything like this for that matter with Canva's background remover tool. Another powerful tool here is Canva's magic erase tool. You can use this to correct defects and things. For example, I don't believe this dino is supposed to have a horn. So you can simply brush over the horn and bam, the horn is gone. And another technique worth mentioning here is by again editing the image, this time selecting filters. You can turn the saturation down and the contrast up, eliminating any grayscale or color in your images. Okay, once you're happy here, then you need to vectorize these images. So let's download them and head to vectorizer.ai. This is again totally free and there's a link in the description. Once you're here, you can just upload your image and let the AI do its thing. Just check out how much cleaner these images are. Huge difference. Now you want to download these images using these settings. The file format is SVG. Under Group By, make sure you select Color. And the other one that's important is fill gaps. Be sure this is unchecked. So now all you need to do is smash that like button for me if you've enjoyed this video so far and then create your cover for your book, then put everything together in Canva and finally get this book published for sale on Amazon. So let's go back to ChatGPT and create a nice cover for our book. Here I'll prompt, can you give me a title and generate a cover image for this book? And this image is extremely important, so be patient here, re-rolling if needed. And again, if you're not getting the results you like, try changing this prompt to be more specific and regenerating. And as you can see, Dolly 3 gives you text and all, which is awesome, but not usually perfect. And that's okay because we can fix this up. So let's head back to Canva, create a new design again at 8.625 inches by 11.25 inches. Here, after you've imported a couple of images from Dolly, e, the first thing you're going to notice is that your image is square and doesn't fit this page. So let's fix this with the magic expand tool. Just center your image high like this and stretch it out a bit so it doesn't have to fill so much empty space. Then using Freeform, you can stretch these corners out to fill the page and click Expand. And if you don't have a paid subscription to Canva, no worries, you can accomplish this for free with Leonardo AI's Canvas tool. And now let's say I like this text, but I want it on this background. Well, you would think I could just use Canva's Magic Grab tool, but as you'll see, this doesn't work. It might clear the text from the background for you without much damage, but the text itself is now unusable. So a better way is to download this image, then vectorize it. Only this time, change the group by section from colored to parent and download. Then again, take it back to Photo P where we can freely edit this vector. This process is simple, but depending on how complex your image is, might take a bit of time. To help speed up the process, you can highlight by dragging your cursor over sections and deleting entire chunks like this. Then you will have to manually select and delete all the individual layers surrounding your text until you have a clean cutout. And once you're happy, you can go ahead to file and export this as a PNG. Then back in Canva, you can add this to whatever cover you like best. As you can see, I've created several variations with these techniques, and I'll choose the best from here. And here's another example. This time when I removed the text, no matter with the magic erase tool or the grab text tool, it messed up the sun in my design over the volcano here. So I use the above mentioned process to remove the volcano. Now I can use this cutout as an overlay. And the same thing applies, say, if you want to pull the dinosaur and put it on a different cover. You can vectorize the image, clean it up in Photo P, then use it how you like here. With these tools and techniques, you should have no trouble creating a beautiful cover for your new coloring book. So once you're happy with the front cover of your book, you can download this. And since this video is running a bit long, I went ahead and finished the interior of the book, creating a title page, a copyright page, a how to use instructional page, and a color testing page, all using Canva's elements and designs. I also added a blank page in between all of the coloring pages to prevent bleed through. Then at the back of the book, I added some dot to dots, as well as a master dinosaur artist certificate for the kids. And finally, a call to action page for my readers. So once you're happy with the interior of your book, you can download this as a PDF standard. And I have Canva Pro, so I'll use the best for printing option. Now let's finish creating the book's cover. For this, you'll need to first visit Amazon KDP to get the dimensions. Here you search under Tools and Resources, then under Format Your Paperback, you can scroll down to the Cover Calculator and Templates tool. Here you need to enter all your book's information. This is a paperback, black and white, with white paper reading from left to right. Then I want inches, and the correct size is 8.5 by 11 inches. And this book has 75 pages, so I'll pop that in here and calculate dimensions. This full cover size is what's important here. So I'll download this template and head back to Canva, creating a new design at the specified dimension of 17.419 by 11.25 inches. And then you can add the template to your page and stretch it to fit. Then I'll just pop the front cover we created into the right side of the template, stretching it to the center, filling the page. Then I went ahead and created the back cover off camera to speed things up, but again, using all the techniques covered in this video and the elements in Canva. 
So I'll stretch this to fit the left side of the template. And to make sure everything is covered and none of the images are obstructed by the book's elements, you can turn the transparency down. Once you're sure everything is lined up and looks good, you can go ahead and delete this cover template, then download this again as a PDF. And finally, we're ready to publish your book for sale on Amazon. And there is a couple of important things to note, so I'll walk you through the publishing process. Starting in Amazon KDP, you'll create a listing. Then you'll fill out all this information, your title, subtitle, author's name, description, etc. And you'll choose a category. For the main category, I'll choose coloring books. And then for the subcategories, I'll select activities, crafts, and games, then activity books, then coloring books, then under placement, I'll say nonfiction, just because the dino's names are real. And then I'll save these. Then I'll check this box because the font is bigger than 16 point. Next, you'll add seven relevant keywords. Finally, save this and continue to the next page. Here, you want to assign your book a free ISBN. Then I'll select black and white interior with white paper and my trim size of 8.25 by 11 inches. Then I'll select bleed PDF only as well as a matte finish for my cover. Then here you will upload your book's interior manuscript and for the cover just select upload cover you already have then upload your file and next this is also important amazon now requires that you disclose any ai used in your creation process so for the text portion i'll select some sections with extensive editing and which tool did i use chat gpt then for the images i'll select many images with extensive editing which tool did i use dali then none for translations and finally you're ready to launch the previewer and take a look inside your book and you can see here if everything fits and it's looking good you can also take a look at the thumbnail view to make sure everything's landing on the correct pages and once you're happy here you can approve this then save and continue finally here you can set the book's price i'm setting mine for seven dollars and 99 cents which will leave me a one dollar and 35 cent profit per sale after cost and that's it you can now publish your new coloring book if you have any questions, be sure to ask in the comments and I will get back to you shortly. And if you're interested, I also have another video teaching how to use Midjourney to create coloring books. You can check that out here. Thanks everybody, stay safe and be blessed.